Hey everybody! So, as I've been saying, I'm currently up in New Hampshire at the Gordon Research Conference on Global Change Biology in the Ocean. So I want to do a series of videos on academic conferences to share with you what this experience is like. And I imagine that for a lot of people, their first question might be, just what exactly is an academic conference? Which is a totally fair question. So just like any other professional field, scientists occasionally will have conferences. You know, you might have heard of like a dental conference or even an anime conference where people in an industry come together um, to share information about their field, their job. For scientists, this can mean either a gathering of people on the same field, like a marine biological conference or a physics conference. It can mean people who all study the same subject matter, like this, where it's ocean global change biology. Or it can even mean a group of people who all study the same animal, because there's conferences on whale sharks and cephalopods and things like that. So any sort of shared focus can bring scientists together to talk about their work. And what this usually entails is either a funding agency, a professional society, or even a university or a group of scientists deciding they want to put on a conference and then putting out advertising for that conference, finding a location for it, etc. So part one for a conference is having a location. They usually want to pick some place that the scientists are going to want to go. This is happening in a nice mountain resort in New Hampshire. And in part, a lot of what's tempting about going to a conference is the location. and. Even though it's not really a vacation, just the ability to go someplace different or interesting. And it's not a vacation, it's actually a fair amount of work. Conferences involve going to lectures and talks, there's usually a big poster session where you're probably presenting your work, uh, networking is a huge component, a lot of conferences will have workshops or exhibitions that are very worth going to, and then uh, there can be other activities involved depending on the, you know, specific context of the conference. And of course, conferences vary in scale. You can have extremely big conferences like the American Geophysical Union or Ocean Sciences where you get scientists from all over the world coming to a really big convention center and there's multiple talks happening at the same time so you have to schedule things very carefully. You have a massive poster session and you'll usually have exhibitions with even like people from industry coming in to talk about technologies to help with the science. And you can also have medium-sized conferences, things where you can have multiple talks in different halls but maybe one poster session only and maybe not an exhibition room, so it's still fairly large and comprehensive, but not as massive a conference event. And then you'll have smaller conferences like this one, where it's a relatively close-knit group of scientists coming together to talk about one topic, so you'll have a specific lecture series that everyone is meant to attend, and then, you know, one big poster hall with poster sessions, and that is about it for the conference. But even in smaller academic conferences, or very specifically focused ones, you can have a very interdisciplinary group of scientists. So even in this conference where it's about ocean global change biology, we have biologists, we have chemists, we have geologists. There's a lot of different fields being represented and they all get the chance to talk to each other. So generally speaking, prominent scientists in the field that the conference is about will probably get invited to give talks, whereas other researchers in the field, professors, postdocs, and students, will probably submit abstracts either to give a talk, be a part of a panel, or present a poster. And an abstract is just a summary of your presentation, a summary of your talk or your poster, or generally your research. So a conference will have a committee of people, a committee of organizers, who go through those abstracts and accept or deny people based on the quality of the summaries they've been given. And we'll talk more about poster sessions later in the week, but this is one of the major ways that students get to show off their work and get to talk to other scientists about what they're doing and how to do it better before they get to the stage of publishing. So one of the major benefits of a conference is bringing together all these scientists, either from across the country or even better yet, across the world, that wouldn't otherwise get a chance to talk to each other or wouldn't even get a chance to meet unless the conference existed to bring them together and facilitate these conversations. And so a big part of conferences is this coming together of people. It's about meeting scientists, collaborators, peers that you wouldn't have otherwise gotten the chance to talk to and either establish friendships or working relationships, maybe even combined research projects, or, you know, maybe jobs down the line. Anyway, I gotta run, I got some more conferency things to do, but my basic point is one of the major reasons people come together in conferences is to build scientific communities that can talk and share information, and that's why they are extremely important. Um, hopefully this cleared up a little bit about what academic conferences are, and I will see you next time. 
Okay, let's try something new. Talk faster. And so I want to do a series of videos on conferences now that I'm filming during the day and don't feel awkward about talking out loud. I'm probably doing this thing right now where I'm just like, say shins, because I'm right, my notes are right here, so I'm looking straight down every time because I have that problem. Community of professionals to get you notes. Or possibly even swallowing. Someone just texted me. Probably Dory.